<laughs> Brian. <laughs> yep, you're artistic bias. Don't trust Brian. Whatever Brian says, just do the opposite. So if he said one, then go for two. <laughs> Don't trust that guy. He's one of the protesters, dude. I know it. He's secretly right now at a protest. He's like, I'm not watching the news because I'm on the news. I am the news. Anyway. <laughs> um, questions? Ask him if you got them. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, would you be able to um, yes. go through a quick... <laughs> Just go through some kind of like um, quick process of how, like a like a study demonstration almost. Yeah, man, of course. That'll just cost you another five hundred dollars. Okay. <laughs> Capitalism <laughs> is the greatest. If you're super greedy, then you just keep on asking people for all their money. Greed, 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 I'm just buying time. I'm getting some images. Nobody? No, someone just asked the question. And then I answer it. The demonstration stuff. Nobody? Or you just wanted to say the word nobody? No, no, no. I wanted to, you know give someone else the chance to speak up before hey, I... Yeah, uh, you can go right after, actually. I'm just going to do the study. And then uh, you can, well, maybe in the midst of it, you can, you can ask. Um, so Phil Hell is a pretty lovely artist. I love his, his stuff. I think he uses himself as his own reference. I think it's his body right there, what we're seeing in a second. It's just photography of that. All right, so <clears throat> how do I study? Well, I usually have an objective. Like, what's my objective, right? Because looking at this image, there's all sorts of things we can look at. We can look at anatomy. We can look at lighting. We can look at painting process. We can look at pose. We can look at colors. We can look at values, right? Right? So if it's values that i'm looking at like if i'm like okay i'm all about the values all i care about is the the values then i'll just get rid of the color right you see what i did there and then i would also probably do something like uh, i'll make a, i'll probably make a, another version and then i'll probably do a smart blur and what smart blur does is it helps get rid of a lot of the detail Right, and then I'll just put that a blur on there and just kind of look at it as if like it was almost like as if I painted it digitally, you know, the way that I paint. You see that? And then I would even measure like the differences of values, right? But I usually try to attempt the painting now with whatever tool I feel fit. You know, it really doesn't matter until I'll be like, okay, I'm going to try to get a sense of how to paint anatomical values effectively. So I'm like, okay, so what I have here is a great, like, torso that I can learn a lot from just studying just this torso. And I'm just going to think about okay, how he went about this. He probably used small brushes because it's an oil painting. And then he probably, uh, because it's oil painting, he probably did a lot of this where he would paint in. And this is this is some preconceived knowledge. This not my this might not be true or accurate, but from what I've seen oil painters do and how they paint, 
This is what I'm just assessing. And there's a gradation there. Because the oil painting, you can blend more aggressively. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in the gradation just aggressively. And then I'll probably begin the process of uh, the process of blending in the forms. And this is something that you just gotta do manually in Photoshop. So oil painters have it easy. I need to have more of a brighter value here. And then blend that in. And then I'm going to use darker value to create the shapes. But this is essentially what I would study. See how it works? All right? Like I just take looks at that, try to practice how to blend stuff, try to get those values nailed down. All right? I think that this is probably still darker than I'm seeing it for, but I would check my work. I would just color pick this value. Yeah, it's definitely darker. I think I was focused mostly on the light. Wait. Yeah, it's even, this whole thing is even darker. Right, let's look right here. Yeah. So I just need to go, the whole thing just needs to be darker in general. I wanted to match those values. But maybe it's not helping that I don't have a darker background. And right, like if I were to have this darker background, it would be so much more obvious to me. that everything needs to be a little bit darker. If I want to match the values of this illustration, you know? But then, so that's how I would gather reference. I'd gather reference this way. But then I will just try to attempt painting my own version of a torso. and follow some of the same rules that I saw there. So first build out the forms on a macro level and then put in the lighting aggressively. I'm going darker this time for sure. Last time I felt it's gone too light. And then I would begin to start to carve out the anatomy. Start making some values a little bit brighter to imply some transitional form here. But I've already studied this quite a lot, so I'm going to do a better job immediately, you know? But that's kind of what I what it looked like when I studied. But this is one of the ways I would study quite a lot of different things. You know? I'll do like the the form studies. Like when I when I was having a hard time with this, I was like, okay, well maybe I don't have an understanding of anatomy. So I need to study anatomy so I can like just secondhand understand what to draw next. You know, instead of just kind of guessing or relying too much on the image to give me that information. You know what I mean? I need audible, audible feedback. Confirmation. Do you know what I mean? Yes or nay? Yeah, we got, yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, is my mic like working or no? <laughs> now it is, you son oh. of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. But you see, but that's what I do. And I would just 
see how I only focused on just the torso? Yeah. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, like, do the whole painting. Because I'm not trying to, like, paint like Phil Hale exactly. I'm just trying to understand how he paints because I like a little bit of that texture feel and that dynamic sense of lighting and form right with his values but that's it his colors yeah maybe i could work on his colors too but right now i don't really care about it huh. you know what i mean okay <clears throat> right now all i care about is like this and then like after i've done this study i'm like yeah i need to learn more anatomy so then i would go and find anatomy images that i would like study and i'll study anatomy get a better understanding of that and just kind of keep going round and round and round until I get really good. And then, you know, you're going to classes like this, like you guys have done, which is great. And then going to events and showing your work to people, getting feedback. That's, that's unstoppable. You know, it makes you get better so much faster. Having, uh, you know, peers that you could talk to and challenge each other, this also really makes it really easy to get better faster. Okay. Yeah, I feel like when I'm when I study stuff and I do try to do like a test, I have a hard time of like kind of making like a default painting to practice it on. Like if 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 you know what I mean. Um. Wait. Spin that again. So, like, say for example, I go ahead and study the values on a piece. Now I go and try to kind of test myself on it, how you just did. Mm -hmm. But I find it difficult to come up with an idea to actually paint. Well, you should paint the thing that you studied. So just try to make it again. Yeah. Okay. Like it, it, it's like from what you were explaining, it'd be like you're studying for a math test, right? And specifically like algebra. Uh huh. And then, and then when you went to get tested, your like your math teacher's like, I don't know what to test you on, so I just gave you geometry. You know like, what? But I studied for geom or I studied for algebra. <laughs> No, okay. Yeah, I know, but I couldn't figure out what to give you, so I just thought it was just... I know you were studying algebra, but, you know, I just doubled up on calculus. Wait, you said geometry. I don't know what I'm doing here, man. I don't know okay. why you pay me. You know, and, but, like, if you think about it, like, in that context, it's, it is kind of bizarre to be like, I right, studied anatomy, and I don't know what to test. Test your anatomy. Test what you've learned, and you might not have learned anything, and that's why you, you study again, harder. You know what I mean? Okay. Like a test isn't supposed to be easy uh, in the beginning, right? It's not yeah. like a test is not supposed to be easy or hard. A test is just a reflection of what you know. It is only going to be hard or easy depending on what you've learned and what you know. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Like, like if you do really poorly on a test, it doesn't make you stupid. It just means you don't know whatever the heck you were tested on. Right? Like if I gave you like an aviation test, right? Like right now, like fly a plane. And you did t terribly, right? You go, they give you the test and you do terribly. Would that be like a personal attack on you? No. Yeah, because it's obvious. Like, well, you like, well, why am I? I don't even know anything about planes, dude. You know, right. why are you giving me this test? It's like, well, well, you don't know how to do it. So you're fucking dumb, dude. <laughs> I know how to do it. You know, it's like, what? But you were like a pilot. You studied. You went to school for it. For like, you did like uh, hundreds of hours of piloting. <laughs> you know, of course yeah. you're going to know how to do it. It's like, no, dude, you're just dumb. And nobody thinks this way, right? Only like children do when they make fun of each other, <laughs> you know? Okay. And, but when you think about it in the context of what a test is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to test like where your limits are right now, right? You may actually be like stupid or dumb at a very thing, but that, but that doesn't end there. You know, it's this idea that like, I had a friend, I had like a huge argument with this guy. Like he was just like, IQ is like set in stone. He's like, if you have this IQ, you can never change it. And I was like, what? What world are you living in <laughs> where people can't get smarter? <laughs> you know? Right. And, um, and he's just like, well, the science is like, well, a lot of scientists are stupid in the day, back in the day. You know, some scientists used to believe the world was flat. You know that? Some scientists even today <laughs> kind of think the world's flat. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like, you know, it's, it's clear to me, you know, that you can get smarter. Like maybe you had a low IQ or GPA when you first started in school, but that's not reflective of your overall potential for intelligence. You know what I mean? Right. Like there was this uh, podcast I was listening to that I thought was really great. And they were talking about intelligence in a really in intelligent and ethical way, in my opinion, because sometimes people can take intelligence and make it real 
You know what I mean? Like they make a real racist real fast. Right. <clears throat> and, or really just like not responsible. Uh, and they approached it really responsibly. And one of the things they were talking about was like Einstein and how, yes, he had a genetic disposition that might've made him smarter than most. Right. Mm-hmm. Like he had, he might've had some sort of genetic advantage that he needed to be the, the smarty pants that he ended up becoming. Right. Mm-hmm. But if he didn't read that book when he was like in high school, that sci-fi book that was talking about all sorts of crazy stuff, like traveling faster than light and time is relative. Like there's this concept of whenever you look at the star, you're looking at the past. Right. Okay. Right. And so it's like, if you wanted to ever go uh, to a place, um, like if you wanted to go, to a place anytime in, in or any if you wanted to go to a place in any time then you would just go back to that moment of light if that makes sense it's like a sci-fi okay. novel which is a cool concept right like it's like that's how you time travel like if someone was looking back at earth right now like a like you know a thousand light years away uh-huh. right they would be looking at our world a thousand years ago right now does that make sense okay yeah that makes sense so they said, if you want to be able to travel, you travel to that light space or whatever, some shit. It was some fascinating sci-fi novel. And Einstein read this, and it fascinated him. And it inspired a lot of his research into what and ultimately became relativity, right? Okay. He had a good support system. He had a girlfriend and wife that was very supportive of this stuff. And they were all, she was also an astrophysicist, you know? Okay. Like he was not incredibly poor. He had enough access to something. You see what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of things that may have contributed to Einstein being one of the greatest minds uh, we've ever encountered in our society, right? Right. So what, what is my point with all this? Well, my point is, is that <clears throat> whenever people fail at a thing, they take it way too personal is what I'm getting at. You know what I mean? Okay. They, they 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 don't recognize that there's a lot of things that go to making someone intelligent, and when you fail a test, it could be a, a plethora of problems. Maybe you didn't study appropriately. Like maybe you had too many variables, right? Like remember how I was only focused on values? Maybe you were focused on values, anatomy, and structure and color. Like too yeah. many things. So it's really hard to really get good at any one of those things, right? Right. So then that's why I've learned to be lo- more focused. You understand? Because I didn't make the same mistake. Okay. But that's what happens when you practice, right? You start to recognize what works and what doesn't work. I can tell you what works for me <coughs> and what I think generally works for everybody. You know, I, I try to hit on a larger paradigm that I think mm-hmm. regardless of who I'm talking to, this will help them in some way. Uh, and that generally is that you should time yourself, that you should test yourself, that you should study often you should study with focus but how you do those specific things can vary greatly right right how you time yourself the length of that time it's can depend on you personally i don't know i can't give you a very exact time sometimes but i know timing in general is just a great strategy in in general that works for most people okay and i know testing works for almost all of us testing is one of the greatest tools specific testing right like when you with contextual testing like when you go to play a video game and something happens to you like you've been tested and challenged in a very specific way you will remember that right like you you will have a lot more your brain will have a lot more opportunity to to pay attention to what's going on that with that you know what i mean right then uh then not does it make sense yes and so uh, I generally give these types of advice because I know it works for most people. Okay. Okay. And so, yeah, when you test yourself and you're like, yeah, I don't know what to test myself. That's the first flaw of your testing. <laughs> you know, you test yourself with the things you just studied. You studied anatomy, test your anatomy. You studied uh, lighting, test your lighting. It shouldn't be confusing. We should pr- be practicing. Okay. You know? Or I'm sorry, uh, uh, testing. But don't worry, like everybody makes this mistake. I uh, I learned this the hard way. I spent a year, 
almost two years, like a year and a half, like studying the wrong way. I had nothing good for a long time. I think it was like a year, maybe not two years. It was definitely like a year. And then one day I, it hit me because I was doing a, a study, quote unquote study. Basically I was just copying an image, like pixel to pixel without any focus, without any thought in my mind. And, <coughs> and then like when I did it, I was just like, like when I try to do it on my own, right? Mm -hmm. I was like completely bewildered. I was like, what, why is none of this making sense? Right. When I was trying to like, I was like, I, oh, I did this epic painting of this chick. I could do it easily now without looking, you know, that was my thought. And then as I started painting it, um, like not looking at any reference, just trying to do it on my own, like my own original design. I had no clue where to start. I didn't know what to do. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I know nothing. Like I just did that study though. It looks like exactly like my reference. Like, where is that knowledge? Right. And that's when I realized that I wasn't really studying. I was just copying. It was like putting together a puzzle, right. like a really elaborate puzzle with like thousands, if not millions of pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, actually understanding the anatomical structure of what I was putting together. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and then that, that was a huge epiphany for me. And when I started to recognize that that was the, one of my major flaws, then I got real good at studying because I focused my efforts, right? Then I started paying attention to very specific um, um, uh, problems, you know? Right, that makes sense actually. Yeah, and then, uh, and then I got really good uh, rapidly because I was focused way more. All right, okay. anyway. But Thank you, that, I appreciate that's, it. Yeah, that's my insight on that. Yeah, no problem. All right. Hey, I have a question. Go for it. Yeah, actually, I posted the link on the Skype. Can you just check it out for a second? It's an art station link from an artist. For a second? All right. I'll do it just for one second. Okay. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, let me... Let me see this nonsense. Oh yeah, I love this person. I already follow it. Yeah, what is he doing actually? Uh, is he just uh, like big, big, medium, small shapes, or is um, like, like the the thing on the right? Yeah. What What is he doing? Um, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to explain with this. But if I had a guess. He's basically saying like, look, I got these three shapes right here that I'm repeating, the green, and yeah. that's, and they're almost identical in size. So that's why I think this works. And then I got these two big shapes, but there are only two of them. I don't repeat it a third time. Well, actually he does, but I'll explain where. I mean, you can probably see it right now. Yeah. Like the head, right? And so like, and he's like, and then I have the third version of it that's actually um, paired together with the triangle shapes and then those two triangle shapes themselves are also dynamic and they're not the same size and he's like basically I think that's what he's explaining <laughs> which is about right yeah that is yeah. like the the layer caking con counterbalance rules of three the three different design rules that I preach are like the only ones you really need to care about when it comes to visual design as humans, this is what I think humans like to see. I don't know what a dog likes to see. I'm sure they have different tastes and what they think looks good. Um, but there, I don't make art for dogs, so. Is there like, like a rule of how many different shape is more aesthetic? Like he uses only triangles and circles. Um, if he were to put, uh, put like a rectangle or you know what I mean? Like, would it be more aesthetic or? No, because uh, he could do it, but at some point, if he does it too much, it starts to break one of those other rules, right? So for instance, um, you, you want to avoid having too much contrast, right? Because rules of three allows you to kind of make sure you don't have too much contrast. Make sense? Like, 
because it's saying like uh, you should have something at least repeated several times, right? Yeah. So if you have seven different things being repeated several different times, it starts to kind of break the rules of three point, right? Yeah. So there's other rules in place that I think help out. Like for instance, the uh, counterbalance helps you to make more contrast with just those few shapes, but you could totally do it. It's just that um, you start to really jump into a, a territory where you start to break pattern. And that's when I usually will start to advise against it. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, because his designs are actually pretty simple. At least the one that we were just looking at. Yeah, that's, right? that's that's what I'm trying to figure out because. But I can I make it. I can make it better. Like it's cool, but I can make it better. I love it yeah. a lot already, but I can make it better. Yeah, yeah. And all all I got to do is, and like by making it more complicated, by just adding more of this this gold spread throughout the design, so it already feels better, right? Because what I'm doing here is these are all the same shape, right? And so, and size, and I think that's problematic. But this is, he did it deliberately. But I would say, you know what? You can keep that. Just add a little bit of gold triangles, smaller versions of it spread throughout the design. Right? That's going to make it look a lot more interesting. And then also, he's, he's got this black detail here. I would add another spot here and here. Right? But if I were to just all of a sudden add like a whole new element, like the square that you're talking about, it's okay. There's not, this design is actually still pretty simple, but we would need to repeat it somehow in uh, enough places for it to make sense that we are okay with this, right? See, it still doesn't feel like I've tarnished this image just yet. Right, it feels like oh yeah, that's actually not a bad touch. Yeah, you know, give her a pink toe or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. But then if you start to like, but at some point, yeah, you, you'll you'll just know like okay, maybe now we're getting a little out of hand, right? Like now it's starting to feel like a little circuitry. But yeah. I could probably still make this work if I really needed to. You know, if this is like the original design. I, I think it was already fine with like just keeping it simple like the original version but I also think that I could have added a little bit more complexity and actually still bring more value to it you know yeah thank you and so it's 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 a matter of like you know people are always like too much detail too much detail you can't have too now too much detail is usually a product of like too much contrast right like you can get real detail with this and it'll still look really good like you can like get all in here. You just got to be consistent. You have to have like a, a consistent story being told visually, you know, and you can keep adding detail. You can add like a trim here. It's going to make it look dope, right? You can add trims on there. It's going to make it look dope, you know? Like there's all sorts of, just all sorts of detail, man. We can keep adding. Oh, you think I'm done, dude? No, we can add some more freaking cloth. Dude. Let's go full tilts, dude, you know? <clears throat> it's all about context what matters right like does it matter do we want to keep the design simple is there a reason that it needs to stay simple right is this character in an environment where the whole environment is incredibly complex so then it makes sense maybe to have a simple character is the environment incredibly simplistic then maybe it makes sense to have a complicated characters right because in the context of that contrast, it makes perfect sense why we would do these things, you know? I love this design regardless of my feedback. But if I had to give feedback, that's my feedback. If that artist asked me, like, what can I do to improve this? And I've had students that were clearly really good artists. And I felt, I felt like they didn't need to take my class. You know, they were already super good. Like if that person took my class, I'd be like, all right, you're good. You should already be working. You know, yeah. But if they ask me, like, well, what could I improve? That would probably be my advice. Is like, you can probably go more detail, and they probably would say something like, "But what if I don't want to go detail?" Well, then they'll ask me questions. Okay. Take, just sit, 
back and watch the class then. What are you doing here? Um, but luckily, the students that are like the ones I'm talking about, like are really good, they actually tend not to have that kind of attitude. They're actually, like if I said that, like he, he or she would be like, oh yeah, man, of course, you're right, I see it now. Like, like that paint over that I would have done, right? That person probably would have been like, oh, fuck yeah, sick, dude, I would have never done that, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's kind of why they're awesome. Because of that same attitude of like, yeah, you're right, I can improve, you know? That's why they're already pretty good. You'll, you find that people that fight you the hardest are usually the ones that aren't as good, but it's not their fault. Their, their, their subconscious insecurities are really speaking for them more than <coughs> their logical brain, right? I mean, we have a good example to put Mike on blast. Mike was like that, the very first class we had together. Not to put him too much on blast, but like he was like that. And then I had to like straight up just paint over his image like entirely to the point where it was remarkably improved. And he was just like, oh yeah, okay, I'm wrong, <laughs> you know? But like I said, like most pros tend not to, like some of the best artists tend to have like the most humble approach to things and they're usually very um, open to, to feedback. Most, not all. Some of them are just good by the virtue of just practicing all the time. They still are very aggro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not everybody's, not everybody can just take feedback. You know, I, I used to be that way too. Um, not that I couldn't take feedback, but I used to be incredibly uh, uh, arrogant. And not in a bad way. I'd just be like, I'm the, I'm the dopest. And uh, I would never insult any other artists or anything like this either. I would just thought that I was so good. And then uh, I remember I went to an event and then I actually saw what good artists look like. What, ha what happened was that I was like, it was like a big fish in a small pond thing. Like I was better than most of my classmates, you know? And I was like, dude, I'm top shit, dude. And then I went to like an event, saw a real portfolio by a real badass, <laughs> you know? And then I was like, oh. I'm like terrible. <laughs> like, why didn't anyone tell me? You know? And then I, I started taking feedback a lot more aggressively. I realized that um, I was wrong about a lot of stuff. So I'm, I'm saying this from even experience, you know, like people that take my class that are really good are actually really receptive to feedback. And I think there's a reason for that. But anyway, that would be my my thoughts on that image, though. Hope that helps. Thanks for answering. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it gives you some more insight. Like that's a really cool thing that the artist did. I don't know um, who they are, but like uh, I do follow them on it on our station. But that is a really cool thing to like break it down like that for other artists to see because they can get a, in a really cool visual. I might just steal that too. For some lessons. Do you, um, do you think about uh, the shapes when you're painting like that? Oh, no, not at all. So uh, the way that I explained this, I used to be like, yeah, man, but that's a lie. <laughs> uh, I don't think about them at all. And the reason why I don't or I, I, I don't have to is because um, because of something like uh, – uh, what like mastery looks like right so if you think about like walking like do you think about walking when you're walking around no no right but that's because you've mastered it because there was a time where you used to not know how to walk you do know this right there was a time in your life where you didn't know how to walk it was when you're like an adolescent you know but over the the many years of walking you got good at it right yeah so the point I'm making is that like um you got like, used to it. Yeah, I, got, I I just have now an intuition for it. Right? Yeah. Uh but uh it wasn't always there. Like I had to like study like religiously. Like I would constantly correct my images, you know? All the time. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes makes sense. Yeah. And so the ways that I would do it is like I would paint my painting 
And then I'll say, okay, let's go down the list. Like rules of three. Am I doing that? Oh shit. No, not at all. What am I doing? You know? So then I'll go and try to add rules of three. All right. I was like, later kicking. Am I doing it? Oh no, I'm not. And I've had students do this where they'll like go back to their work and I tell them like, especially if they're doing a really bad job of it. Like if their designs are really scattered, I'll like make it like a whole homework assignment where that's all you focus on, you know, but you don't have to wait for me to give you that assignment. You can try it on your own, you know? Yep. Can I ask a question? Yeah, man, go for it. Uh, when you're doing like cut lines or trim, do you do it based off of like the coolest looking line in the context or do you do it yeah. uh, over the Always. force? Oh yeah, that too. Man, that's actually a great double down on that question. No, yeah, absolutely. That as well. I don't just uh, make sure that the cut line's cool. I also try to make sure that it follows the form. That's true. Okay, because when I had some like faceted stuff in my in my mech stuff, it was like I was having a little trouble trying to get a cool looking cut line, but like respecting that the turn the form is completely turning like at ninety degree angles, um, without it looking like boring. Yeah. So that's so that goes back to the problem of like understanding perspective well right because if you understand perspective well then you can design cut lines in perspective too does it make sense yeah so like if you don't have a good sense of perspective and form then you you might be a victim to flat design right so you're always designing in a flat universe like a 2d universe does that make sense mm -hmm. Right. And so like, um, like when you try to draw a cut line and it just seems like you're going to destroy your form, maybe your form was never, uh, there in the first place I'm getting at, you know? And so the, the solution to this problem is yeah, to, to make sure you have better understanding of form. So for instance, like if I were to like draw a, uh, a cut line on this kind of collar, Right. So first thing I would need to like try to figure out where I haven't really defined it yet, but like, I was like, now I can kind of see it. I'm like, okay, so I can probably draw a cut line here a cut line there. And that's like following the form here. It's coming down like that. And then I'll just kind of bring it together down here somewhere. And then maybe put like a buckle or something. Right. To kind of make sense of this nonsense. And then I'll start to paint the form of this color so it would even make more sense. This is kind of also painted from a silhouette, which has its own problems, but I'm, I want to deliberately keep this character separate from the background. I'm going to probably repurpose this character for something I'm working on. But essentially, uh, like this shoulder right here, like I can see, I can create like cuts there if I like there's like a say a fold like if I design the fold here like how would I design the, the cut line on this you know like constantly paying attention to that stuff yeah absolutely um, and then one more thing is like subconsciously paying attention to it but it's definitely there like I'm just like oh yeah that's the form I put a cut yeah, line there I was, I was curious if that if you like consciously were or even if you ever Sub, yeah, subconsciously, I hardly like right now when I was consciously thinking about it, it was very weird. I was like, what, what am I doing? Here? Yeah. You know, but like, um, well, there's um, a lot of things at this point you do subconsciously. Yeah. The, the, what, the things that are not subconscious, uh, this point in my career. Yeah. See, now I'm like rethinking about this whole shape, um, is specifically, uh, is design, is the design cool? Right? Like, does this look like a cool character? Does this fit the role of what I'm designing it for? That's it. That's like the biggest thing on my mind. Right? And so that's what drives a lot of these choices of like the shapes that I'm changing up. Okay. Um, and I also didn't get uh, a homework assignment. Cool. All right, next question. <laughs> what would you like me to do for next week? Uh, just do more busts. Try to get nail it down, dude. You say you're gonna try to do six and do the other four. Oh, okay. 
in focus on the macro forms, the biggest problem that you're having right now. All right. Can I uh, can I add something to this point for Mike? Nope. I'm the only teacher. Okay. I already told you I don't take feedback well. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, of course. Um, so I, I was dealing with this uh, earlier today while trying to do some cut lines on the armor of one of my characters. And uh, uh, some shapes were a bit too complicated to understand uh, first uh, hand. So what I did was I just made a new layer on top and uh, showed like the basic round brush, made it a bright red and tried to <coughs> think, like to make some lines to determine like what the shape looked like, where it bends and how it curves and stuff like that. And then it would just, it would help. So, yeah. I don't know. Work for me. Good out of here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> kind of like how uh, Colin painted out the halfway to black. There's like different like, methods for beginners to kind of do the math. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hate um, halfway to black. But if it works, it works. <laughs> That's my least favorite strat. <laughs> Why do you hate it? Oh, it's just not accurate. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is the principle of life. And then, like, AJ is like, nah, he's trash. Okay. I'm like, fuck, dude. What? <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about, dude. He doesn't know. God damn it. I'm fucking. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, it just isn't. It's just not. Um, it's like a good strategy. I think that is a good strategy if you're just starting out to get a grasp of how you're painting things. But uh, if you really want to understand values, you just got to look at like masters a lot more. You know, you got to look at like old school painters, like uh, Rockwell, Linedarker, Sargent, these motherfuckers. They know what they know what's up. Um, but the halfway to black, uh, it's a great way to like prevent yourself from over overcompensating your darks and lights. It's a great strategy for that. But to do it, to do it better. It's just to not make those mistakes. Just know when not to go too dark and when not to go too light in, in a realistic sense. And the only way to really practice that, it's really hard, is to, yeah, like look at the masters who mastered this, right? And then look at um, real life more often. Because real life will give you all the evidence you need. I'm not sure who invented Halfway to Black, where that came from. It came from one of my masters, and he's still wrong. <laughs> I don't take change very well, as I've already established. Can I, uh, can I ask a question, AJ? Or yes. Is it so funny when you guys say, can I ask a question? You can just start asking a question. Like, this okay. is absolutely Q&A. Actually, I have a few questions, but two of them are really short. All right. Go for it. Um, so first, I was wondering if you have any idea about this, how to recreate the effect of scrapped paint in digital. Uh, what do you I'll mean? Just, I'll wait. I'll just uh, paste something in the Skype for you to see. Just, I don't know exactly how to explain it. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Is it already so this, this is an oil painting that I that I'm showing you, but that's the oh. kind of effect that I'm talking about. Okay. Scrapped paint? Like you mean like this this stuff? Like painting yeah. on top of it? Yeah. You probably just find like a brush pack and just put it on top. Like mm. there's like there's like Photoshop brushes that just kind of look like that. Really? Stamp them in. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't think I have any. Uh, I have something that might be close, but I don't think it's like that. Uh, I thought it would be um, like more complicated. Well, I mean, if you're just trying to get effect, you can even just get like a Jackson Pollock painting or something, and <laughs> and just overlay it on top. You know, but oh, like yeah. it, it's just a matter of just putting it in there, right? Like just like put it in there and then just shape it accordingly. 
but like I said, I don't really have a brush. Cool. So <laughs> I don't have um, a brush like that, but I would, this is like my first steps of trying to attempt that aesthetic. Hmm. Okay. Just okay. from looking at it, right? Like just find texture brushes that create that illusion and then just be smart about how you're putting them in. Probably on a separate layer at first. Yeah, right? that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay. What's cool is that like if you want to even get that, because uh, what paint does too, it has like a, uh, it has form. So you can probably just like yeah. put some like bevel on it or something, or like give it like a drop shadow. Mm -hmm. Like let's put a drop shadow, see how that looks. I guess I accidentally painted white in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that. Let's do bevel and bo emboss too. Okay. And let's see. Let's see what happens there. I guess it's not as easy to see. I put a stroke. Get like a whole different effect, but you can probably get some in there too. Uh, yeah, here we go. This color burn is doing some cool stuff. Mm. But anyway, you can like you can figure it out. Is what I'm saying like you can just like you're in Photoshop. There's all sorts of like Photoshop tricks to do, yeah. I guess I'm just to gonna create these effects. Start. Yeah. yeah, but th I think there's even just brushes that look like that. You just stamp them on, like you just like, mm, and okay. it just like looks like that brush job. And then you just do all that other trickery that I was just doing to make it look like it actually is like the canvas painting. Yeah, I mean, that would be uh, efficient. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have to like all of a sudden learn how to be a master painter <laughs> in Photoshop. You just gotta like paint, it can, yeah, you just got to paint something that has brush strokes to it. Yeah. Painting it and then uh, apply apply that effect. But um okay, thanks. But, um I did have a more serious question actually. Yeah, go for it. Uh, just to stop at that. Uh it's about uh dealing with, you know, paralysis when it comes to painting certain things so I'm having a problem I guess uh, every time I try to paint <coughs> an illustration mm -hmm. like a complex piece with uh, maybe characters or one character and an environment like more than your standard uh, I don't know portrait or character design or something like that uh, I just get to a point where I feel like I can't do it anymore um, and I, I just I just freeze and I just leave it there for the longest time mm -hmm. and I was wondering if uh, do you have any advice to help manage that or is it something that can be overcome or just kept in check somehow yeah okay so you have this problem where you start to an illustration mm -hmm. and you feel like stuck like you start it comes to a point where you just don't know what to do next or you just don't know what yeah to do. yeah I get to a point where I'm too afraid to just put any more brush strokes on it okay and I feel like I don't know where to take it or sure. where it's going or if it's good enough or you know all sorts of the, you know the, no, I get it Okay, so so the question is, um, why do you why do you think you stop specifically? Like, what what do you think was what are the bigger reasons? Uh, well, you kind of said some stuff like uh, you don't you don't want to ruin it, like you feel like yeah, or keep yeah. adding to it. It's it's the more because usually it takes me quite a while to do an illustration like that because you know it takes a while. So I guess. One reason could be because I end up spending so much time looking at it that I get attached to it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it's the it's the unhealthy sort of attachment. 
Yeah. Where I'm like, you know. No, I got it. Okay, so then, and, uh, and then, so then the, the question is like, but you do also recognize that it, it could be improved or you need to improve it more, like it's not done? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the answer to this is you just got to do it anyway. You just got to finish it. Mm -hmm. anyway. And regardless of how you feel. Remember how I talked about the artist bias a lot? Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I think is important uh, is your intuition. Recompassing your intuition. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Your intuition at this moment, it says we get to a certain point, we got to just not do nothing anymore. Mm -hmm. And that intuition is wrong. Okay. Like mm -hmm. you have an intuition and that's what kicks in. And so you need to recompass that intuition to have an intuition that makes you do it regardless of how you feel. And the, the, the logic behind why you should just do it regardless is because you don't know how to do those final steps. And because you don't know how to do those final steps, you don't do anything. And because you don't do anything, you'll never know how to do those final steps. Mm -hmm. you, see the, you see the conundrum that you put yourself in. Yeah. And, and the, the, the answer to this conundrum is to just finish it and just accept <coughs> whatever result you get. And it's probably going to be garbage, right? It's probably going to be something you don't like. But <coughs> you'll learn why you don't like it. You'll learn the parts of the process that you are frustrated with. And when you know that, guess what you can do after that? Get over it. Well, like, let's say you start to paint, like you start to correct your brushes and you feel like your image is too stiff, like you've stiffened up your painting. Mm -hmm. So what should you do about that then? <clears throat> well, let's say this is what happens, right? You start painting and you're like, oh man, my painting's starting to stiff up. <coughs> <coughs> How do you think you improve this? Well, you, you go study that. Yeah, and what would you do to go study that? Keep painting. <laughs> no, just like be oh, very specific. Painting, like, yeah. What would you think you'd do? Uh, learn, maybe? I don't okay. know. So you're, you're, you're doing uh, too abstract. I'm, I'm trying to teach you how to be more specific. So okay. What would you do? Like literally, okay, my paintings are too stiff. And now I'm going to do a thing. And it is going to be learning and it is going to be studying, but what is the thing that you're studying and you're learning? Like, what are you going to do? Like, what, what is the exercise going to look like? Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, just take a guess though. Like just anything that you think would help you out. So when my paintings look stiff. Yeah, like you start to render it and you feel like all your materials are starting to look like a thing and everything, like all the dynamic strokes you put are all now gone. Uh, well, so, I guess I, I, I try to combine several things or study them separately. Like, uh, I, I, first of all, I think I'd go back to values. Uh -huh. uh, then I'd go back to studying uh, materials and with materials, brush stroke. Like yeah. Take you know, because you go. emulates materials. And it's kind of there you go. Yeah. And then what else would you do? What else would you try to do? Uh, uh, study more composition, maybe? Yeah. What else? Mm -hmm. Poses, dynamics. Yeah. yeah. See, this is, this is the thing. These are all great solutions. There's no right... Like this is the way you fix it. You do all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that you're not even asking the question of what yeah. to improve. Cause you're not even attempting anything. You see the problem? Mm -hmm. Like, cause you don't even try to fix your illustration, right? Cause you have this analysis paralysis, right? About how it could go wrong. You don't even know what the fuck's wrong. Like you don't even know what's wrong with you until you do what until you actually confront it right remember mm -hmm. i had like this meaningful talk with mike just moments ago right like he's oh man it's sucking i was sucking freaking shapes balls man it sucked badly right like, he's like oh i was feeling i was disappointing you and i was failing and i was explaining to him that's the deal right yeah 
So now what should he practice? Well, the thing that he had a hard time doing, now he's going to go ahead and do that and get better. I'm sure of it, right? It might not be like light years better, but he's going to improve lightly but surely. This is the point that, uh, this is the problem that a lot of people have is that they don't realize that if you don't try to suck, you won't know what not to do and what you should try to be doing, you know? Like a lot of you guys have probably already learned that, oh man, if my thumbnails were much cleaner from the very beginning, this whole cleaning them up, cleaning them up would have been much easier. Yeah. Well, how do you know that? Well, you, cause you, you are now trying to clean them up, right? Imagine if you didn't, you wouldn't have this insight, you know? So now the next time you do a character, guess what? You're gonna be a little bit wiser, right? You're gonna have a little bit more intuition in the right direction of what you should start with, right? And when you do your illustrations, the same thing might happen. You start doing that and you start putting lighting and color and all this, and you're like, oh man, like this environment is starting to fall apart. Like I didn't think about the environment until the end, right? Like, oh, maybe I should have had that from the beginning. And the next time you do one, you're gonna do it from the beginning, right? You're just gonna intuitively just know you should start, start a little bit smarter, right? <coughs> and so when you're, not, when you're not actually practicing, you know, you're not actually, or, or you're challenging yourself to do the thing, like finish the race, then you don't know what to improve. That's the ultimate problem of why, oh, that's the ultimate problem of not actually trying to finish it. Just accept they're probably, they're probably going to be terrible. Right? I mean, it's just going to happen. You're going to have to face it someday. Right? It's better to face it right away so you can start fixing the problems. Right? It's ne like this scenario is never going to really play out. And if it does, it's going to take so long where you will just have all the right pieces and then you can make a fully finished illustration just out of nowhere. You've never done it before, but you did all the other stuff and now you can just do it. Right? Like that's, that's such a crazy idea. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not like I can, I, I can get really good at soccer by just kicking the soccer ball a lot, kicking it at a goal, dribbling between cones, doing all that stuff, doing all of these things, but I've never played a soccer game. I've never played against real players, right? Like, all that skill's great. It's going to make me above average. But as soon as I start playing against people that are trying to steal the ball from me and there's actually a goalie, right, I'm going to be fucking flipped right upside down, you know? I'm going to be like, what the, you know? This is, a, this is a challenge. And so that's why you have to also play the game, right? You got to like do the thing to completion so you can see where the discrepancies are, right? Because like I was practicing dribbling the ball with the cones, but I realized that's like, when am I ever going to do that? It's, it's more just like to have better foot control with the ball, but I'm not going to be like going through cones <laughs> in a soccer game, right? And so like, and people are more dynamic than that, Right. So like I've practiced the static kicking the ball between cones that is very predictable. So I'm like, okay, so I need to, I need to practice in a different way. So I would play a game. Somebody steals the ball from me immediately. Right. I'm like, shit. Okay. So mm -hmm. maybe what I should do when I practice again is maybe make the cones more random instead of like a straight line. Like I've been doing it. Right. So maybe I still don't have a player to practice against, but at least I can like try to create some circumstances, at least familiar to the actual game. You know, uh, maybe have my friend try to steal the ball from me. I'm going to try to go right and he knows I'm going to go right. And all I'm going to do is try to get past him and just practice that constantly, you know, get really good at that, you know, and then I'm something else trying to go left. You see what I'm saying? But now I have context. I understand because I played the game. I, the ball got stolen from me immediately. Right. Because all of what I was practicing before was incredibly static. It was not dynamic, you know? And I think that's why, like, with that like, kind of philosophy, that's why you have to finish paintings, right? Because you need to experience getting the ball stolen from you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, metaphorically speaking, you know? You need to experience that so you can be like, all right, now I need to go, like I said, like, you practice... Uh, you gave a lot of great examples. Not one of these things is going to give you the ultimate answer, but it's going to begin giving you the right answer, right? It's going to collectively add up to the right answer. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. So that, that's, that's my general advice is just finish an illustration I did and just accept that it's probably going to be garbage. And then, uh, and then ask yourself why.
why is it garbage? You know, and what could you have done better from the beginning? Usually, the reason why paintings usually don't do well um, is because of a lack of skill and also making a lot of mistakes from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll take one last question. I got to get out of here. It's already past time. I feel somebody has a question. They're afraid. Who are you? Show yourself. Don't be afraid. Well, if nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can ask one more question. Right there. Let's do it. Okay, I'll go with a short one. I have an entire list here. Uh, so we, just to, let's make sure we go through that list at some point. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, so just really quick, do you think, like from a professional artist? Point of view, do you think uh, lack of, you know, passion or interest towards a certain subject can be uh, detected in a portfolio by a professional? Yeah, yeah I think so. Hmm. Okay. It's usually because just the quality isn't there. That's usually the biggest sign of it. Uh -huh. um, like student portfolios have this all the time. They'll have like graphic re graphic design. They'll have like um, like they'll have like all sorts of random shit in their portfolio. So it's clearly like they're like a student of some sort of school and they're like, you gotta have everything. If you wanna get those jobs. And then they have like all sorts of crazy stuff that's just not good. It's just like they just did it to pass their class rather than they actually wanted to do it. Mm. That makes sense. It's pretty yeah. cool, I think, yeah. Okay. It's not like so obvious, but it's also like, not so not obvious it's like pretty like i could tell whether you're you're you like what you do or not usually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i'm guessing that's something that a professional artist usually has the eye to see right it, yeah, but like, let me put it to you this way okay. um, if you if you're good at what you do and you still don't like it like that's uh, hard, that's hard to tell like I won't. I wouldn't know. I'll be like, "Oh man, this is fucking amazing!" I like remember even using Mike as, an, Mike as an example again. Remember, like he didn't like the one that I like as much. Yeah, yeah. David yeah. Bryan is another good example, right? Yeah. They both did well, right? Hmm. Yeah. Like, um, so right. is that is, a, is that a true measurement? You know, it's, it's like uh, of like whether they like the illustration or not, like by the quality. It's not really. But I'm saying like I could definitely tell, um, usually, but not always. And so, and I, I would say if you're making artwork that you don't necessarily like to do, and you're really good at it, you got to be very careful. Like I have students like that, like they're really good graphic designers, and they took my class because they want to get out of that. And then they just keep getting graphic design work, and they're just like, I don't know how to get out of this, and, mm -hmm. I, and I don't know either. You just gotta like stop doing graphic design work. Because then they just keep building their portfolio with more graphic design work, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what they're gonna get. And so they're just gonna keep getting it, yeah. And so uh, I think so, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would worry only on quality. Like, is your work good? That's, mm -hmm. the, most, that's the most important facet that matters to me and to most clients. Uh, and if you like what you're doing, doing and it's bad, then just keep doing it until you're good. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't like what you're doing and it's good, then reconsider what you're doing. You know? Yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in the ballpark of do what you like to do, mm -hmm. especially when you start to do it for a job. It's gonna feel like a job, and if you don't like it, then it's gonna double feel like a job. You know what I mean? Like if you don't like doing character concept art, and you're asked to do nothing but character concept art, you're not gonna like your job, even if you're the greatest at it. I love to do character concept art. I love to do character illustrations, monsters, robots, sci-fi, fantasy, all that stuff. And that's what I get paid to do. And I like doing it. It's still a job. It's still hard for me sometimes to kind of like just do a thing for somebody else. But that's why they give me money. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do it. And uh, <clears throat> But it's not like I hate it either. It's like, yeah, it's still fun. This is still pretty exciting. I'm very grateful. You know? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but there are my, my personal opinion, my things that I like to do, I usually do it for myself. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, I'm going to let you guys go now. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Work your best. Remember, this is towards the last week of class, so work your damnedest. And then I'll see you guys next week, friends. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.